Hi friends, welcome back to our series of sessions on sensors and transducers. Today we shall discuss on photodiodes. A photodiode is a light sensitive semiconductor diode which produces current when it absorbs photons. The package of a photodiode allows light or infrared or ultraviolet radiation or X-rays to reach the sensitive part of the device. The package may include lenses or optical filters, devices designed for use, especially as a photodiode use a PIN junction rather than PN junction to increase the speed of response. Photodiodes usually have a slower response time as their surface area increases. The photodiode is designed to operate on reverse bias mode. The solar cell used to generate electric power is a large area photodiode, in other words. To see the principle of operation, a photodiode is a PIN structure of PN junction. When a photon of sufficient energy strikes the diode, it creates an electron hole pair. This mechanism is also known as the inner photoelectric effect. If the absorption occurs in the junction's depletion region, or one diffusion length away from it, these carriers are swept from the junction by the built-in electric field of the depletion region. Thus holes move towards the anode and electrons towards the cathode and a photo current is produced. The total current through the photodiode is the sum of the dark current, which is nothing but current that is generated in the absence of light and the photo current. So the dark current must be minimized to minimize the sensitivity of the device. To first order for a given spectral distribution, the photo current is linearly proportional to the irradiance. We have an IO, IV characteristics, current voltage characteristics of a, an ideal diode here, uh, whereas IC, ID is the dark current here, and then we have IPH photo current, then we have CS diode capacitance, then we have RP, parallel resistance, then IR, noise current, then we have RS, series resistance, then RL, load resistance. So if you see the IV characteristics, we have on the uh, IE here, and uh, this is for a given resistance. This is for RL is infinite here, and then you will see RL is much, much less than or D, diode parallel resistance here, what we are uh, uh, seeing. So and then E1 here is much lesser than e, E5, E1, E2, E3. That's how the, uh, because it is on the negative side. So this is, a, we have to, here it is on the photovoltaic mode, as long as it is in the uh, forward bias and then reverse bias, it is on the photodiode mode. That is exactly what we have to understand the IV characteristics of the photodiode. The linear load lines represent the response of the external circuit I, that is the applied bias voltage minus the diode voltage divided by the total resistance. That's the total current that we get. The points of intersection with the curves represent the actual current and voltage for a given bias, resistance and Illumination. So in photovoltaic mode, that's a zero bias, photo current flows into the anode through a short circuit to the anode cathode. If the circuit is open or has a low impedance, restricting the photo current out of the device, a voltage builds up in the direction that forward biases the diode, that is anode positive with respect to cathode. If the circuit is shorted or the impedance is low, a forward current will consume all or some of the photo current. This mode exploits the photovoltaic effect, which is the basis for solar cells. A traditional solar cell is just a large area photodiode. For optimum power output, the photovoltaic cell will be operated at a voltage that causes only a small forward current compared to the photo current. Now, if you see it in the photoconductive mode, which is nothing but the photodiode mode, the diode is reverse biased in this, that is the cathode driven positive with respect to the anode. This reduces the response time 
because the additional reverse bias increases the width of the depletion layer, which decreases the junction's capacitance and increases the region with an electric field that will cause electrons to be quickly collected. The reverse bias also creates a dark current without much change to the photocurrent. We see the materials used to make a photodiode, which are critical to defining its properties because only photons with sufficient energy to excite electrons across the material's band gap will produce significant photocurrents. Materials commonly used to produce photodiodes are silicon, which, has a, which uh, can handle the electromagnetic spectrum wavelength of 190 to 1100 nanometers, germanium from 400 to 1700 nanometers, indium gallium arsenide from 800 to 200 2,600 nanometers, lead to sulfide, less than 1,000 to 3,500 nanometers, and mercury, cadmium, telluride, which are the next generation, 400 to 14,000 nanometers. So because of their greater band gap, silicon-based photodiodes generate less noise than germanium-based photodiodes. Binary materials such as molybdenum sulfide and graphene emerged as new materials for the production of photodiodes of late. Then there are unwanted and wanted photodiode effects. Any PN junction, if illuminated, is potentially a photodiode. Semiconductor devices such as diodes, transistors, and ICs contain PN junctions and will not function correctly if they are illuminated by unwanted electromagnetic radiation, which is nothing but the light of wavelength suitable to produce a photocurrent. This is avoided by encapsulating devices in opaque housings. If these housings are not completely opaque to highly energy generation, like ultraviolet X-rays and gamma rays, diodes, transistors, and ICs can malfunction due to induced photocurrents. Background radiation from the packaging is also significant. Radiation hardening mitigates these effects. In some cases, the effect is actually wanted, for example, to use LEDs as light sensitive devices, or even for energy harvesting, then sometimes called light emitting and light absorbing diodes, LEADs. Then let's see the critical performance parameters of a photodiode that include spectral res responsivity, dark current, response time, and noise equivalent power. You see the spectral responsivity, which is nothing but the ratio of the generated photocurrent to incident light power, expressed as A by W when used in photoconductive mode. The wavelength dependence may also be expressed as a quantum efficiency of the ratio of the number of photo generated carriers to incident photons, which is a less unitless quantity. Then we have the dark current. The dark current is the current through the photodiode in the absence of light when it is operated in a photoconductive mode. The dark current includes photocurrent generated by background radiation and the saturation current of the semiconductor junction. Dark current must be accounted for by calibration of a, if a photodiode is used to make an accurate optical power measurement. And it is also a source of noise when a photodiode is used in an optical communication system. Then we have the response time. The response time is the time required for the detector to respond to an optical input. A photon absorbed by the semiconducting material will generate an electron hole pair, which will in turn start moving in the material under the effect of the electric field and thus generate a current. When used in an optical communication system, the response time determines the bandwidth available for signal modulation and thus data transmission. We have finally the noise equivalent power, which is the minimum input optical power to generate photocurrent, equal to the RMS noise current in a one hertz bandwidth. N noise equivalent power is essentially the minimum detectable power. When a photodiode is used in an optical communication system, all these parameters contribute to the sensitivity of the optical receiver, which is the minimum input power required for the receiver to achieve a specified bit error rate. Then let's see the applications. 
PN junction diodes are used in similar applications to other photo detectors such as photoconductors, charge coupled devices, and photomultiplier tubes. They may be used to generate an output which is dependent upon the illumination, whether it is analog or measurement, or to change the state of circuitry in terms of digital, either for control and switching or for digital signal processing. Photodiodes are used in consumer electronic devices such as compact displayers, smoke detectors, medical devices, and the receivers for infrared remote control devices used to control equipment from television to air conditioners. For many applications, either photodiodes or photoconductors may be used. Either type of photo sensor may be used for light measurement as in camera light meters or to respond to light levels as in switching on street light after darkness. Photo sensors of all types may be used to respond to incident light or to source of light which is part of the same circuit or system. A photodiode is often combined into a single component with an emitter of light, usually a light emitting diode, either to detect the presence of a mechanical obstruction to the beam or to couple two digital or analog circuits while maintaining extremely high electrical isolation between them. Often for safety, the combination of LED and photodiode is also used in many sensor systems to characterize different types of products based on their optical absorbance. Photodiodes are often used for accurate measurement of light intensity in science industry. They generally have a more linear response than photoconductors. They're also widely used in various medical applications such as detectors for computed tomography coupled with scintillators, instruments to analyze samples as in immunoassay and pulse oximeters. PIN diodes are much faster and more sensitive than PN junction diodes and hence are often used for optical communication and in lighting regulation. So that's all about the photodiodes. Hope you have enjoyed the session. Thank you.